Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make happy hardcore, happy core, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think who made this genre really famous was Nanobi. Um, he had this big breakthrough with Monster Cat and uh, I think his big first song was Rainbow Road, which is still doing really great today. Um, this, this, this kind of genre it's more so about the music theory than the sound design because as you can see my patterns there isn't really much going on it's literally just um one two three four layers doing stuff and the rest is just background elements so let's dissect them one by one so for, of course the most important thing is the kick uh, this is how the kick sounds on its own with the layers of course So without the clap layer, this kick kind of sounds dull. And without the tech, it still sounds kind of the same, but the transient layer I have here is really adding some top, uh, top uh, high end sparkle that makes this thing uh, pop out. You, you need some really good headphones to hear the difference. Um, but anyway. Add this clap layer, add some reverb on it, uh, which uh, five um, here. Just add some reverb on it uh, and then sidechain the attack of the clap out so they don't clash with the kick uh, attack, uh, of, with the attack of the kick. Oh my God, I'm talking fucking garbage today. Um, symbols. Symbols are really simple. It's just a right and the offbeat open hi hat. Um, and then of course a crash at the beginning. Again, I don't have special processing. All I have is transient processor to, um, it kind of, it's kind of like a side chain, but it's all at the same time. I'm just getting rid of the attack of the right else. It sounds like this. There's this really strong transient in the right, which I don't want to, I don't want it to interfere with the kick. So, um, white noise. Again, just effects, uh, because without it, the impact kind of sounds um, boring, I guess. And white noise. The white noise is just to fill out the frequency spectrum. So it sounds big and it's kind of like the thing is with humans, um, when they hear other people cheer on, they will cheer on as well. It's like kind of if someone starts clapping, the other person will start clapping and then it's just like this whole snowball uh, effect. So it's like at this crowd effect and the listener will hear people like it because the crowd is just people cheering on, right? So <laughs> yeah, that's also another nice side effect of almost every song has a crowd in the background it just it's not really prominent like if i play everything at once you won't really hear it unless you really pay attention like but if i take it out you will hear it that it, it was taking space i hope it was uh, prominent enough so let's talk about the synths the song the first song is in c major so it's just white note notes but then you might wonder what the hell is that f sharp supposed to do here or this d d sharp or this a sharp well this is what we call modulation by the way bonus points to whoever guesses where this what, what the song is inspired from um, so I don't really want to get into modulation that much into this video. However, um, let's assume the song did not modulate at all. So this would go down. Again, without the modulation, it doesn't really sound um, as happy, I guess. Um, because if it's always 
in major, you don't really there's nothing to compare it against to, right? So if you constant if, if you sometimes modulate into uh minor that really helps uh, make the major shine out more, if that makes sense. So let's go into the bass sound first. So the bass sound, it's really basic. Um, I don't know why people think I have some special sauce in my basses, but um, let's just go through this patch one by one. So this is how the bass sounds on its own without any effects. So now we're going to add some FM for greediness. And now we're going to add the sub because the main layer here is um, in stereo. So we need a separate sub here. Some noise. This noise is going to be important in the next step. So Distortion. Without distortion it's, and without noise, it sounds really dull. So we need the noise here to add some really nice high end. And then I'm making it a bit more stereo again and adding a tiny bit of room. Um, post processing. Um, Getting rid of some of the really low ends, I don't really need those. And some of the low mids because that's, that's just muddy. And some of the highs because they're, 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 there's too much sparkle there. Uh, some OTT um, to kind of bring out every uh, missing frequency. Then I'm putting it through saturator and then volume shaper. And then I'm making the sub mono as well. So, uh, the lead. I like to do this kind of lead in Harmo because um, it has a really nice unison effect. Um, the random gives it a really nice, uh, uh, how to say, character. Uh, most important thing though in this patch is the lock distortion because without the lock distortion, it kind of sounds dull. <laughs> Lock distortion really adds some nice low mids uh, in this patch, which uh, I really like. Next layer, Spire. This layer is more for the uh, stereo field. Any synth works with this, in fact, the Silent One, Serum, um, or I'm sure any free VST as well inside your DAW will do for this kind of for this kind of purpose. Um, most important thing you need to, oh yeah, don't let me, don't let me forget. Um, if you do this, do this kind of patches, make sure you have mono on and slide because um, you want the notes kind of to be slide when you need them to. I will go uh, into it in the next example. And, and then last ingredient is, um, just a back, background pad, uh, very simple again. All right, um, so the second example I have here. You can, um, this song is in D sharp minor, um, but it has a fast, uh, chord progression this time, which kind of makes it sound fun and adventurous. Uh, however, most important thing here to note is how these notes bend. So pay, pay close attention. So the bending adds all of the, I guess, in uniqueness in this patch. Um, let me turn it off. Doesn't really sound great. It still had some glide because I had it in the uh, in the patch. Again, without the glide, it doesn't really sound good. So make sure you have your patch in mono 
and turn up the slides quite high. All right. Again, pretty simple stuff. Um, I have an ARP in the second break uh, um, part as well. Again, um, very fast pattern. Uh, even though the song modulates, this is the patch if anyone wants to copy it. Um, this is a really simple pattern and it doesn't really follow the modulation as well and there's one i think there's one modulation right here uh however it doesn't matter uh because um we're still staying true to the roots of the song uh let's go to processing so the kick again just sun saturator um, I'm I'm not really using this transient processor anyway, and yeah, this is a big mess. Um, you should never use the kick where you would need this much EQing. However, I I like to be really precise with my kicks. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, um, don't do this. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> don't do this. Um, next part is the bass. Again, just EQ uh, uh, actually, I went over the bass already. My bad. Uh, lead. So for the lead. Uh, just some Saturn um, processing, uh, I mean compressing. OTT to get everything out again. Uh, boosting the highs a bit, just a bit. And then uh, Saturator and Volume Shaper. And for the reverb, um, it's these settings. Uh, I think in my Gamma video I went um, more in depth on how these all these knobs work. So, if you want to go more into the reverb thingy, just watch my gamma video again. Uh, also, these samples, all from my sample pack. Um, link in the description. And the last part would be, yeah, background. Um, a pet. So it's an imager, volume shaper, and EQ. Again, very simple. Uh, the thing you have to take with this video is um, there's no secret um, for this type of thing. It's all about music theory, um, some simple sounds. And yeah, uh, if you need some, uh, what I would recommend, uh, study some game music, especially like from Kirby or Mario Kart, uh, because these songs are very happy-esque. Um, and I have lots of, uh, you can listen to them all over again. Like they're really fun to listen to. And, um, these tracks are mostly inspired also from Kirby and Mario and whoever can guess what this first song is from gets a big bonus point from me. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want more of this content, please, uh, like, and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.